Make sure to stick around to the very end to see why the ID14 just may be the creme de la creme of the budget audio interfaces. All right, so I might have overlooked this unit. The society has spoken. We're about to see what all the hype is about Audi and ID14 MK2. Let's go! No intro straight to the front of the panel. What do we have? That small little headphone input. And this, my friends, is a big draw for me that I know you will find convenient and of value as well. Not your typical quarter inch input, but a rarely included 3.5 millimeter input, also known as a mini jack. And trust me, there will come a time where you will find yourself in this situation. See how this can become a problem? But wait, there's more. I am here to clarify that the MK2 is not just giving you optionality here with these two inputs, but is in fact giving you a true dual headphone output. So keeping this presentation in context, this does give the ID14 MK2 a solid one up on the SSL2 and Volt 276 alike. They only come equipped with one headphone output. And if you happen to be newly joining the party here at Sound Society, make sure to catch up on this topic with our best budget audio interface video, link in the description below. Now back to it. Yes, the Focusrite 8i6 does give you two headphone outputs also, but not at the convenience of having the mini jack at your disposal, which means points and praises for the ID14 MK2. What else? Now, not to confuse this JFET input with your other high Z input designs, but with this JFET design, you're sure to capture a more accurate representation while preserving all of your instrument's tone. As I did listen to shootouts of several common types of high Z designs, I have to admit I did prefer the JFET over the rest as I felt it was more musically balanced in my opinion. And that's just as advertised. But what else does this unit bring to the table? Y'all know I love it when a preamp has a story. And once again, Audion delivers on that too. Now this ain't your run of the mill onboard preamp, but with this unit, Audion delivers straight to your desk the same preamp found in their ASP 8024 Heritage Edition console. And with this unit, you are getting two of those professional grade preamps, both which deliver up to 58 dBs of gain and are known for their low noise, low distortion characteristics, where you can expect a very clean, very accurate capture, which only further validates the MK2's professional stature. Oh, and on these inputs of these pre's, you already know you got combi jacks, which can be a mic or line input, pretty much standard these days. But you know the deal, keeping it moving. Guys, these guys keep coming with it. All metal chassis, yet another sign of not just quality, but pro level gear here. Don't you sell it short. My Apollo X4, y'all know how much it goes for, and that's an all metal design, and y'all are getting that build quality at $300. Should have just saved my money and got an audience unit, but next. Another aspect that is usually so casually mentioned and again is a big draw for me is that the unit is bus powered. Now what does that mean? It means that no power supply is required to use this unit. And how annoying it is when you're trying to work away from home somewhere in a chair with coffee in the air with an extra outlet nowhere to be found. It's the worst. No power supply needed. I like that. Just a USB-C connection and we're good to go. Moving on. Nice, tall, open metering. I don't know about y'all, but I can appreciate it. But how are y'all feeling about hardware and the metering it provides? And in some cases, the lack thereof. Does this even matter to you? Do you even value it? Let us know down in the comment section. So on this unit, we got seven lights before clipping versus the SSL2 and Volt 276 that are giving us four lights before hitting zero. So the ID14 is giving us a little bit more zoom and a little bit more info on the signal of whatever we're monitoring. And as they say, it's the little things that matter. Next. So we just mentioned monitoring, and on the back of the unit, you got not one, but two pairs of line outs, which means we can set up not just one, but two pairs of studio monitors to reference your mixes on. And uh, with that, I have a confession to make. I've got two pairs of studio monitors, but I have to admit, I have even yet to use both in the same session. Seems like I need to step my game up. So the three buttons on the top of the unit. A lot of y'all may be wondering, and eh, what do these guys do? So boom. With the left and right end buttons, with the speaker and the headphone icons, they're exactly what you think they are. The speaker icon gives you access to the main output monitoring, while the headphone icon allows you to access the headphone output. Easy enough, right? 
But then you have this mysterious ID button in the middle, and this is where the MK2 unleashes more of its value and flexibility that's further separating itself from the competition. So with this magic ID button, you can choose from a handful of monitoring features such as speaker switching, mono sum, talk back, and much more, and assign it to this button, allowing you to further enhance your workflow. Nice, I know. So check it out. I'm gonna serve y'all straight. Forget the complimentary plugins, forget the Mixer interface app, which is damn near standard anyway these days. In my opinion, it's hardly noteworthy. But you know what else is noteworthy with this unit? Scroll control. Don't sleep, do not downplay this feature. I almost overlooked it myself, but with scroll control, with the big knob on the MK2, you can control virtually any plugin within any DAW. That is scroll wheel enabled. Do y'all understand how dope this is? All I have to say is automation, automation, automation. Made easy. Vocal rides, no problem. Effects automation with scroll control, we can make the reverbs roll and the delays dance. No more keying in the automation with that mouse of yours. Usually the pros will ride automations with the faders on an actual console or even with the control service that'll uh, put it in your bank account. But once again, Audion delivers, offering a professional flex at an affordable price point. So if you happen to be in the market for a new interface and feel that the Audion ID14 MK2 feels like the unit for you, for your convenience, we left a link for you in the description below. And if that wasn't enough, another feature that is unique to this unit that caught my attention was the ID14's loop playback feature. In short, let's just say, when configured properly within your computer with the ID14 MK2, you are able to record your computer's audio internally, all while simultaneously capturing audio from your microphone if you so desire. And as the company suggests, and as you can imagine, this can be applicable and extremely advantageous for podcasters and new age content creators alike. I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to get uh, kind of overwhelmed by the value of this unit. And then we can't talk interfaces without talking about the converters. Society and friends, let me tell you, I just about fell out my chair when I looked deeper into this unit and came to realize that these converters they pack in this thing are crazy. Absolutely insane and unheard of at this price point. Now for y'all new to this world of audio that may be wondering, what's the big deal about the dynamic range of interfaces converters? Well, simply put, the dynamic range is the range between the quietest and the loudest part of any given signal. That if y'all can visualize with me, the more dB range within the bottom and the top of a signal, well, essentially equates to more information collected, which equates to more detail, in which Audion is capturing all of it. However, I've searched, I've compared, I've scoured the internet highways, society, down in the comment section where you at. Find me another interface of any price point that delivers a dynamic range that hell even matches the insane 126 dBs of dynamic range that the ID14 MK2 delivers. I'll wait, because if there's another interface out there that does, I don't know about it. In any price point, enlighten me, please. Comment section, once again, it's your chance to shine. Yes, my Apollo X4 is said to deliver 127 dBs of dynamic range, but now coming across this unit, I'm having a hard time justifying the more costly alternative UA's X4 now that I know that this MK2 is built to this spec and performs at this level. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, I'm excited for y'all genuinely, but I think I might have put my money in the wrong interface. And the Sound Society's best budget audio interface was... Uh, well, I don't want to spoil it. If you haven't seen our original video, once again, link in the description. But whoever we had chosen, that was before I knew about this monster. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a new winner. Maybe. I don't know. But I want to know what y'all think. Once again, comment section, speaker piece. Now, many people, just as I did, throw the names of audience ID models around loosely and often confuse the ID14 model with the ID4 model, and then not even realizing that there are Mark 1 and Mark 2 versions of both units. And what are the differences? Don't worry, we got you. Next video, let's go.